Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some procedural animation for the player's arms in order to allow for procedural fire cone as well as recoil. We're going to be doing this a little bit slower than normal just because this is a relatively complex subject and I want to step through it slowly so that I make sure I get all of it and I'm as clear as possible. So we're going to go ahead and hop right in and first off I'm going to go over the changes that I made to the character rig here. Now as you can see here in Blender I went ahead and went the route with the game rig tools that I have used in previous tutorials and I'll put a link to the download for these tools. They can be very handy specifically for making Rigify rigs a little bit more simple to be used inside of game engines and in this particular case I needed to simplify the arms into a more IK friendly method and I also went ahead and made the revolver parented to the hand bone. Now this did result in me having to redo all of my animations which was a bit of a nightmare but now I can go ahead and make more complex animations and then also blend in between IK and FK as necessary. And as you can see down here, I have quite a lot of animations. All the V2 ones down here are the ones I actually settled on using, and all of them have been imported into Godot underneath the arms animations.gltf. I don't have them set to auto re-import because I have made a lot of modifications in the animation player. So let's go ahead and hop into that. So over here in the animation player, if I take, for example, aiming reload. So what this will do is go from an aiming position through the entire reload animation which has now been converted over at the suggestion of some of our viewers to a more manual reload animation instead of the speed reloader that we had before. So as you can see, we go ahead and go from a position like this, we put away the flashlight, we go through the full reload, and then when we draw out the flashlight, we're back into the idle animation. You can see we flip the flashlight back on. Now, a lot of this couldn't actually be handled in Blender. So I went ahead and added a bunch of tracks down here and specifically take note of the IK interpolation here. So the IK starts out at one and then goes down to zero and we have the left and right hands as well with the right hand going out of IK a little bit slower than the left hand as the left hand needs to move that flashlight down and so this is kind of on a case-by-case -case basis with each of the different animations we have the IKs as well as the flashlight itself becoming invisible down here we have a bunch of tracks for the visibility of each of the individual bullets in the chamber here and we cycle between on and off on the actual bullet in the hand as he places each of the different from bullets into the cylinder and then we go back to the flashlight there's a lot of complexity here that's why i'm not going to go over each bit if you want to break down the animation feel free to jump in we're going to be moving straight into the code though so as to keep things moving one thing i do want to mention here is that the flashlight itself has a blend shape on it i didn't want to add any more bones to the skeleton so i went ahead and added a blend shape to the flashlight and all that does is move this little button to turn on the flashlight besides that i also went ahead and added a couple ik bones here so let's go ahead and turn back on the animation tree and if we take say the right IK and hit play IK the IK is based off of the right hand this took a lot of finagling to get right but now you can see that the container for that IK is generally where the barrel ends up being when the IK is turned on now the aiming IK is a little bit different it contains both the left and right hand with the flashlight in the left hand underneath the right hand and so I wanted them to be paired together now because of the way the animation tree changed up we swapped out a couple things you can see here we have the various states to blend between between them but we did go ahead and have a different animation for reloading now it's important to note at the beginning and end of each of these different animations we do blend into IK so that's why the animation looks so static when it's in idle and when it's in fire because everything having to do with the recoil and with the idle movements are all handled by the IK so this in here is just for the specific animations for things like reloading and what have you so we can go ahead and hop into code now I am gonna make note here I went ahead and modified the player body controller this is just to respect the the animation tree as it currently stands as previously to this I didn't have a different reload animation for each of the different states aiming and not aiming so I went ahead and added that and made sure to set the is aiming to false after the reload animation is no longer true now this should function almost identical to the way it did before other than that I also have the different reload animation names up here so we're just gonna leave that as is now jumping into the weapon effects controller I am gonna do a couple a bit of cleanup here I'm gonna add a couple of export categories 
And all these are going to do is break up in the actual inspector, the different options. We want the shot functionality to remain unchanged. So we're just going to put that up there. I'll show you what this looks like in just a moment. But first off, let's go ahead and add the variables. So we're going to be using a noise resource for the actual spread. And that's the cone of fire spread. And we're going to need a panning speed. And that's going to be how fast we pan through the noise, as well as a cone size that's going to be in degrees for how wide of a field of fire we want. And that's for aiming and for idle. So when we're aiming, we want a five degree cone of fire and when we're idle we want a 20 degree that way we've got a lot less accuracy when we're just standing there with the gun at our hip we're also going to go ahead and add a spread bloom per shot and that's going to be an additive that is added on top of the aiming cone regardless of whether we're aiming or just on the hip this is just going to spread out that cone of fire a little bit and then we're also going to have a decay that's how fast we go back to the normal cone of fire now in addition to this we're going to create two variables which are going to be our recoil horizontal bias and our re coil rotation bias. So the horizontal bias is just how far to the right or left do we want to make the recoil actually kick. I find that a little bit to the left actually makes the recoil look a little bit more realistic as he pulls the gun a little bit to the left when he fires. Now also in addition to this I add in a recoil rotation bias. This is just how close to the line of fire is the pistol going to be. So this means if this value is lower the pistol will not physically move upwards but it will rotate upwards. And if the value is higher then the pistol will also move upwards as it fires. I find about 0.85 works on this. You can work with whatever you've got. If you want the gun to feel like the user is more skilled and has more control over their weapon, put this value higher. Then we're going to go ahead and add in the recoil size. This is just going to be how much velocity upwards we're going to be adding with those shots, as well as the recoil panning speed. And this is going to be exactly like the spread panning speed. It's just going to modulate that noise in order to get us some change over time. Then we're also going to have recoil fade. And that's how fast we get back to our baseline as well as recoil actual blend speed since we're lurping into the recoil in order to smooth everything out this is how fast we blend into that recoil now underneath the node references we're also going to want a fair few nodes so first off we're going to have our ik solvers as well as a reference to the node 3d for the camera node then we're going to want our three containers the aiming ik container right hand idle ik container and left hand idle ik container now the left hand we're not actually going to be doing anything with today but later Later on, I want to implement some more complex code for making the flashlight kind of move around ambiently and also kind of focus on things that I want to bring attention to the, to the player. And that's, of course, when we're not aiming down sights. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to have the IK target nodes for the right hand aiming and idle, as well as the left hand IK target nodes. And these are just going to be used to swap out the IKs for when we aim down sights. Now we are going to want a fair few private variables, but let's go ahead and build that and look at how it looks in the inspector. So this is how export categories work. They break up the different groups of variables as if they are separate categories, and it can really help to organize your variables. I would highly recommend you use them wherever you need to. I haven't used them up until this point because we haven't really had too much of a need to, but I do want to try and use them further in the future as well as export groups, which are slightly different. But back into code, we can go ahead and get a few private variables. So first off, we're going to have our our recoil target and actual so the actual is going to be lurping again with that blend speed and then the target is going to be what we're actually set to as well as a variable for the current recoil time and that's going to be our panning modulator for the noise variable as well as the current spread additive and the current spread time now the additive is kind of like a stress mechanic it's just how much the bloom of the pistol is currently affected and that will just fade over time back to our normal cone of fire and then the spread time is going to be used exactly like the current recoil time and last but not least, we're going to want three variables that we're just going to cache, which are going to be the base positions of the aiming target, as well as the right and left hand idle positions. These are going to be used to make sure that we don't get too far off of the baseline. And to implement those, we can go ahead and assign them in the ready variable to the aiming IK container, as well as right hand IK container and left hand IK container positions. Now we're not going with global positions because we want them in relative to the actual arm container. We are also going to go ahead and start our IK solvers. Now just below ready, let's go ahead and create a new override for the process function. So first off, we're going to go ahead and iterate our times. So these are going to be used for the noise function. We're going to be iterating these with the delta multiplied by their various panning speeds. And we're going to be wrapping these around a very high number. So that way we don't go over what a float can actually contain as far as how high the variable is. And then we're going to do something a little bit different for the current spread additive. We're going to be using the mathf.max. And so this is just going to make sure that it never goes below zero, but it's constantly subtracting the delta multiplied by the spread bloom decay. And that's just going to make it fade back to zero no matter what. 
and we're going to be doing the same thing with the current recoil target. We're going to be subtracting delta from it multiplied by the recoil fade. And once again, we're clamping that to zero. Now for the current recoil actual, we're going to be lerping from it towards the current recoil target. This just goes ahead and makes sure that any little hitches, any little bumps in the current recoil target, like when you fire your weapon, won't immediately teleport where the gun is aiming and will instead blend into it very rapidly. Now in order to get our actual vector 3 of our recoil, we're going to go ahead and create a new vector 3. And we're going to be using the spread noise dot get noise 1D for each of the X, Y variables. And the Z variable is going to remain zero at all times. That way the gun doesn't twist. Later on, we may implement something like that for when the player moves left and right. But for now, we're not worried about that. Now, be aware, we are going to go ahead and add to the current recoil time 1000 on the get noise 1D for the Y axis. This makes sure that the X and Y are two different variables. Otherwise, if we use the same for both of them, we would get the same result. Now, on the x-axis we did go ahead and multiply it by 0.5 and add one to it this just remaps it over from negative one to one to zero to one and this just makes sure that we're always kicking the gun up and we're never kicking it down when we fire and then on the y-axis we're just going to go ahead and use the raw noise so that we go left and right then we're going to multiply all of that by the current recoil actual value convert it over to radians from degrees now we can go ahead and use that but first we need to check to see if we're aiming down sights and we're going to use an is aiming variable, which I have not actually created yet. So let me go ahead and add that below has round available. And then we're also going to add in an else statement for that as well. So if we're aiming, we need to go ahead and create our spread variable. And we're going to do this in very much the same way as the recoil. But we're not going to normalize the x, va x value to one, 0 to 1. We're going to leave it negative 1 to 1. And then we're also going to do the same thing for the y-axis. And we're going to use the current spread time as opposed to the current recoil time. Then we're going to multiply that by the spread aiming cone size added to the current spread additive. And then once again, we're converting that to radians from degree. And this is just going to get a Euler value that we can add to our rotation that is somewhere in the cone of fire. Same thing with the recoil, it's a Euler value that we can just add to our rotations. Now, if we were going inverted 360 degrees, we would definitely have problems with gimbal lock, but in this particular case, we're not ever going to be going backwards, so we should be just fine. Then we're going to go ahead and set the aiming IK container dot rotation to recoil plus spread. And since it starts out always looking forward, that should just bump it up or down or left or right as necessary off of that target. Now the global position, we're going to do something a little bit different. So first off, we're going to take the camera node dot two global of the aiming target base position. That's the value that we cached up there. We're just going to linear interpolate between that and the camera nodes global position plus the forward vector of the aiming IK container normalized multiplied by the aiming target base position link. Now what that means is that instead of just being where the hand currently is, it will be between the camera and the aiming target target location by the distance of how far the hand should be away from the camera. That way it will adjust the actual hand holding the pistol up or down or left or right a little bit accounting for that aim. And we're going to linear interpolate this based off the recoil rotation bias. And that's just going to adjust the gun to be a bit more realistic. Now we're going to do the same thing if we're not aiming with a slight difference. We're going to use the right hand's idle base position, X and Y, but not the Z. So that way it gets where the hand is down into the right or where its base position should be, but back on the Z axis of the actual origin of the arm. So that's going to be back right underneath the camera, but down into the right where the arm should be. And we're going to use that as the origin position and then move it forward by the forward vector of the right hand's container, just like we did before. And all that's going to do is make sure that we're pivoting off of generally where the elbow should be on the player. And that's going to be pretty much it for the process function. Now, there's a couple things left to do. We're going to add in the recoil as well as the spread additive in the fire revolver. And all we have to do to do that is take the current recoil target, add to it the recoil size. And then we're going to do the, the current spread additive as well and add to that the spread bloom per shot. Now, down here, I have created two new functions for the set aim mode and set idle mode. These are just called in the animations in order to swap out the IKs. So we're going to go ahead and set the left hand IK. IK solvers target node to the left hand aiming IK target node. And we have to use the get path on this as the target node for the IK solvers are not actually nodes. They're just node paths. So we go ahead and set those and we set is aiming to true. And then we're going to do the opposite for the set idle mode. We're just going to set them to the idle IK targets and set is aiming to false. And that should be pretty much it. So let's go ahead and build. 
and if we hop over here we do have a lot of variables to set up so first off let's create a new noise and feel free to play around with this i haven't gone into it too much because just the basic noise works just fine for me all of these variables are already set to what i suggest you set them to but feel free to mess with them especially the horizontal bias and the rotation bias as that can really affect how the gunplay feels now we're going to go ahead and set up the ik solvers the camera node we're going to go ahead and leave alone we're actually going to be setting that in the player body but the uh, rest we're going to go ahead and set up the containers and then the targets as well and that should be it so if we just save that and hop over to the player body we should be able to select the player effects controller and we need to set that camera node to the actual camera 3d we're going to be setting that camera 3d as a child of a node 3d soon in order to make camera shake work properly but for now this will work just fine let's go ahead and hit play and see what it looks like all right so as you can see the gun is now moving around a little bit and its spread is quite wide if we're aiming from the hip but if we aim down sides the gun spread is not too bad and if we fire it goes ahead and kicks it up based off of noise and if we just keep firing it will just keep adding to that kick and if we go ahead and fire just five times and then leave it you can see how the aim is all over the place right at first and then it kind of settles back down to what it should be and these variables definitely need a bit of work but for now i'm actually quite pleased with it it's going to make the gunplay a little bit harder to actually hit what you're aiming at as well as making it feel a little bit more realistic i do need to go ahead and get camera shake in as well as a bit of a bounce when the player is taking steps and all of that i'm going to be going over in the next video but for now this will work just fine and i would highly suggest you all hop in and play with the variables on this as you can get some pretty interesting results that are different from one another just by tweaking some variables just a tiny amount so it's very interesting to see how it all works out in game but as always thank you all for watching i hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial